This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. 18 years ago, I ran away and joined the circus. And then I married this guy named Russell Berry. You know? <laughs> what? That's where the heck, no. Who you, fought, you fought the no. warden from Last Case was Regina's mom. That's true. Yes, so that's what I said. Yes, because they're like still in cahoots. They're still talking. <laughs> she just didn't know he was a murderer. And, and, well, and Russell Berry was kind of like, things with my wife weren't so good. No, he or didn't. I thought, he, we never talked to no, him. No, that was Mo. Never mind. He didn't Mo, say anything about that. No, Mo had a daughter. That was Mo's family. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mo, I, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Mo had the family that like <laughs> was ashamed of him being. Fun. Can I testify now? Yes. On the day of the incident, I was waiting in the main lobby, ma lobby, main building, until the judging. Yeehaw. During the judging, at Monsieur Master's request, I went to change the film in the camera. But before I could deliver the camera to him, I discovered Monsieur Dover's body. After Monsieur Gregory arrived, I prepared tea for everyone involved in the investigation. It was then that I witnessed Monsieur Gustavia entering M Monsieur Dover's room. What, what What? was the problem with that? <laughs> <laughs> he just stole the family photo. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, that's what we know at oh. least. <laughs> and that was everything I had done on that day. I don't think there's anything suspicious about my actions. That's not your decision to make. Mr. Edgeworth, was there any contradictions in her testimony? For now, I should just prove that she stole the sculptures. But when could Miss Hall have stolen them? If I can answer that, her crime should come to light. On the day of the incident, I was waiting in the main building. I was waiting in the main building, okay? <laughs> what were you doing before the judging began? I was in my room on the second floor practicing my dancing. Great British Bake Off was a musical back then. That was so good. I was performing on the TV show Piece of Cake back then. Piece of Cake? What kind of show was that? It was a children's program. The hosts made sweets while singing and dancing. That sounds either terrible wait, or great. Wait, could, could I have that as a job, please? <laughs> please? Ooh, that sounds like fun! Seriously, like, I love to sing, I love to dance, I love to bake. Boom. Well, well that's unexpected. You knew about the show, Miles? Like, put me on M Sprout. My father told me about it once, so I just happened to watch it a few times. My father will hear about this. <laughs> My father will hear about this. That's basically Sebastian. <laughs> so, Miss Hall was practicing her dancing in her room. Could Miss Hall have stolen the sculptures then? She stole them then. She couldn't have been then. <laughs> You know, it's, pos it's possible to defeat evil I while dancing. Therefore, <laughs> it's probably possible to create evil while dancing. What? No, Phineas and Ferb. Do you remember that? No. Do you I remember that episode where they've no. got the evil dance exercise thing? And oh. then they're like, it's impossible to defeat evil while dancing. And then, like, Perry the Platypus, like, does a conga line and makes the robot fall off the cliff. I don't remember that now. You don't? Oh, my gosh. Oh, that was a that's one of my favorite episodes. It couldn't have been then. I should listen to more of her testimony. I think it asks you that at the end of every statement you press. Hold it! Ding, 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 ding. So, you were the only one who could move freely during the judging period? I certainly would have had more freedom to move about than the contestants. However... Oh, oh, I, could, oh. <laughs> I couldn't have possibly stolen the sculptures right in front of Monsieur Master. Moreover, upon being asked to change the film, I went directly to the entryway. At Mr. Master's request, she went to change the film in the camera. She totally could have then. <laughs> Wirt's gonna ask us for evidence, though. Where's your evidence? Look, it's your honor. <laughs> in your brain. In your brain. <laughs> I discovered the Sudolver's with that. There are a lot of Reddit. My, one of my favorite Ratatouille reactions is like the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the sunglasses. <laughs> with the sunglasses, yeah. So you entered Mr. Master's room before you delivered the camera? Yes. I had heard the sound of something breaking, you see. This again? We get this flashback like all Monsieur the time. Monsieur Master! May are I you take here? your order? May I take your order? Hey! 
Oh dear. It's fine. I'm not very surprised We've seen anymore. So many. <laughs> we kept yeah. five times. That sound. That was actually the sound of a ship breaking. Someone snuck a bite of it. You see. <laughs> when the body was discovered, was Mr. Master still judging Mr. Gustavia's room? I'm sure that he was. Monsieur Master is the type of person who would carefully judge one room at a time. <laughs> this one's shaped like a duck. It wins. <laughs> Leaves. That would be Artie for sure. She found Mr. Dover's body inside Mr. Master's room. If you, if you made a... Could she have stolen the oh sculptures then? It's like the chocolate chicken, but a chocolate duck. <laughs> That automatically Max's wins. Chocolate Chicken. Max's Chocolate Chicken. One of the best children's books. With a terrible With a moral. terrible moral. <laughs> I love Morris's disappearing bag, too. Oh, yeah. Did you do so in the same manner as today? Yes. I poured tea for everyone working on the investigation. Now that you mention it, Uncle Ray also got some tea from you that day. Kate was pushing her service cart back and forth from the patio to the main building. I see. Did anything seem strange to you then? Hmm. Well, I remember your old man singing praises of her Ceylon tea. And he also said something about how the saucer was chilled. The saucer was chilled? How do you remember that, of all things? <laughs> Why did it just show us a flashback of that for two seconds for no you reason? Wanna see? <laughs> yeah, she absolutely stole it. Why do you think that? You've said that for almost every no, time. No, but she did because that's when she stole the ice sculptures. Oh, oh, the, the saucer's chilled Just... to make the tea better. Uh-huh. <laughs> it couldn't have been then. I should listen to more of her testimony. You should have made a do, 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 do. We'll was go back. then I witnessed Molsir Gustavia. Oh, um, dear. What? <laughs> Tell me more. Did you get very far? <laughs> <laughs> when exactly did Mr. Gustavia enter the victim's room? It was when Monsieur Gregory and the rest were investigating the crime scene. Apparently, Mr. McGustavia went into Mr. Dover's room to retrieve a family photo. The samurai. <laughs> Stole their picture so the partnership would remain a secret, right? But you can't be a great thief if you get caught stealing! Okay, I don't think Mr. Gustavia is a great thief. The moment Mr. Gustavia sneaked into Mr. Dover's room... Could Miss Hall have stolen the sculptures then? <laughs> it couldn't have been then. I should listen to more of her testimony. Now, when could she have stolen the sculptures? Oh, the saucers were chilled. <laughs> when did Miss Hall steal the sherbet, eh? Hmm, even with the brains of a great thief, I'm stumped. If you want to know what happened, you should ask someone who was there. Don't forget, you can always count on Uncle Ray. We don't need Uncle Bray, we have brains. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> do, do, do. I prepared tea. Just like the guy from Harvest Moon 64. Just like Guy Fieri. He Guy probably... Fieri never prepares tea. I feel like he Guy Fieri- He prepares coffee dipped in gravy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he no, does? I'm kidding. Oh. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan. <laughs> this was when you stole the Sir Sherbet sculptures. I'm sorry, but- most of Shields and company were at the fountain patio the entire time. Are you saying I stole them in broad daylight? That's precisely what I'm saying. This is where she hid the sculptures to steal them right under their noses. I got it. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> Neither my father nor Mr. Shields realized the sculpture was right in front of them. Right in front of me! That, like, hurt my ears. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> well, what you were pushing around was no ordinary service cart. I haven't seen that movie in so long. It's a good one. It's it, a good movie. It was the sculpture itself. <laughs> but surely that would still be impossible. If she placed the sculptures on the service cart, people would notice immediately. I never said she used the service cart to move the sculptures. What? What do you mean? Then what did she use to move the sculptures around? It's this a, is what Miss Hall used to transport the sculptures. It's a lofted thing. It's a lift trailly. Trailly. And this is? This is the lift trolley that Mr. Dover used 18 years ago to move his sherbet sculptures. It seems this same lift trolley lies here in the fountain patio. That's because it was...
was originally prepared for the contest in the first place. Are you saying she used the lift trolley to move the sculptures? Yes. If the sculptures were placed on this lift trolley and then covered with a ta tablecloth, it could be disguised as a service cart and moved without arousing suspicion. How could that be? So the saucers were chilled because they were sitting on the ice sculptures? Kate, what's the meaning of this? What were you thinking? That was truly impressive. Also, someone really needs to clean up the tea on the ground that looks like throw up. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are, Monsieur Gregory's son. After 18 years, it's hard to imagine any proof that I stole the sculptures remained. But I knew it was only a matter of time until I was suspected. Miss Curator, does this mean you admit to stealing the sculptures? Yes, I admit it. Eighteen years ago, I stole the sherbet sculptures from Monsieur Dover's room. It's just as Monsieur Edgeworth says. I discovered the- I disguised the lift trolley as a service cart. And I served tea as I made my way back and forth. That wasn't all. I also took the ice block with all the star clusters on it. An ice block with star clusters on it? That seems familiar. A giant block of ice is being displayed here. It appears to be quite heavy. No, the inside must be hollow. The Winter Palace is a reproduction of Mr. Dover's room from 18 years ago. Because they had melted, my father never got the chance to see them. But those blocks of ice were also originally from Dover's Sherbet Salon. The two sculptures and the two blocks of ice. I took everything I could. Why, though? And then I placed empty glass cases in Monsieur Dover's room. The sculptures were all encased in glass to prevent their- to, to pre preserve their fine details. But the ice blocks were being displayed as they were. As per the rules, we prepared the glass cases for Mr. Dover. Hmm. So it would have been easy for her to prepare the glass cases. In Monsieur Dover's room, there were some sculptures that were still unfinished. I thought, if I melted them, it would look like the ones I stole and melted, too. So everything you see in the Winter Palace are all original works from 18 years ago. Miss Hall didn't take much to get into her to confess. That's getting picked up on the microphone, by the way. Sorry. Then she must know. She knows it isn't enough to try her in court. That is all I have to say. But, even though I admit to stealing the sculptures, you can't arrest me for it. What? What, what do you mean by that? Heavens! You're assisting an investigation without knowing this much? Perhaps you should read this book concerning the Statute of Limitations. <laughs> it's like a kid's book. There's a cat with a clock this next to it. This is the Statute of Limitations. Statute of Limitations? Statute of Limitations data jotted down in the organizer. You make it fun somehow. To put it simply, it's the time frame in which a suspect can be taken to court. You can see it on this page. Statute of Limitations, murder, 15 years, theft, 7 years. Oh, that was really fast. The Statute of Limitations for murder is 15 years, and for theft it's 7 years. Ah! Oh! Okay, yeah, theft to seven years. If the suspect flees to or lives in a foreign country, the time limit is on hold until the suspect returns. If possible, accomplices are on trial. The countdown is stopped until the verdict is reached and then resumes. If charges are pressed to demand compensation, the statute is frozen for the length of that procedure. Are they, wait, they're pressed, put, pull that back up. Pressed to demand compensation, what does that mean? So like, if someone steals something and someone charges them with theft, and like one, I think if they want like a plea deal or something, then I think it would freeze for that amount of time as well. So the thing that I'm looking at is if the suspect flees to or lives in a foreign country. Yeah. Because so, so like let's say some like I kill someone and then it's like I'm moving to Aruba, <laughs> and then it's like all right, well statute of limitations isn't counting down for as long as they don't live in the country that it took place in. Right. 
the reason I suspect that completely is because not only did she try and go around and get Pierre Hoquet's art, but France. she's also, she's an actress. Yeah. She's probably in New York. She might be in Japan. This takes Florida. place in America. But she also, <laughs> but she also might have gone to like France. She might have performed overseas. Right. Like, if you're an actress, you're going to be going multiple mm -hmm. places. If mo if possible accomplices are on trial, the countdown is stopped until the verdict is reached. Yes. How? That is going to be the thing, actually, because you know what? Possible accomplices would be her father, and he was on trial for like what? A, ten a whole years? year. A whole a year? year. That's like a pretty long time. So. I think it's going to come down to a multiple of those factors. That's right, and Miss Hall's theft was 18 years ago. According to the statute, she cannot be arrested for stealing the sculptures. So, that's how it is. Stealing evidence from a crime scene is an unforgivable offense. But, seven years have passed so we can forgive it. <laughs> However, for this crime at least, we have no right to pass judgment. It appears that Prosecutor Edgeworth's tempered reasoning has all been for naught. Hmm. I wonder about that. I deduced Miss Hall's actions simply to expose a different crime. If she only took the sculptures, we wouldn't have found the body from 18 years ago. Are you saying that I hid Monsieur Dover's body? That's correct. But how can someone hide a body for 18 years? I would imagine it would be a very difficult under normal circumstances. So you're saying that the circumstances weren't normal? Are you claiming you know where the body was hidden? When you consider Miss Hall's actions, the answer becomes obvious. 18 years ago, Miss Hall stole something more than just the sherbet sculptures. If you're so confident, I would like to hear your answer. What she actually got was she got a gigantic tin and that normally has like the tea in it that they said seals perfectly and they stuffed the body in it. She went to Costco to buy the Twinings tea. Yeah, yeah, she got that and then she stuffed him in it and then that's how he was preserved for so long. Well, we don't have that as evidence. He was mummified. Otherwise, he was, um... Where did she hide the body? <laughs> <Gee -paws. laughs> like a genie? Was it his stupid fingerprints that were on the wall? Whose? The bodies. Somebody no, didn't want to find a picture of somebody. Okay, so we'll go for a one at a time. So we got the prosecutor's badge, okay. not that. Did she throw him in one of the uh, cases? Like the glass cases? One of these? Yeah. This is the photograph of Mr. Dover's sculptures. Yes, and perhaps you've noticed that the victim's body can be seen in this picture. I do not see it. Please point it out clearly. Where in this picture can one see the body of the victim? I can't see it. It's time to expose the location of the body in the photograph. I want to see. <laughs> He's the bull. No. Who, Boyoki? None of the- is it- is he in one of the sculptures? That seems kind of ridiculous. What is that? Down here? Mm -hmm. That's where it's plugged in. Oh. Because it needs to stay chill. He's in or the Or that's like the rainbow lamp. light device. Well, they said the harp was like bloody or something. He's in the, the Gemini line. one. The Gemini sculpture. Yes. While it may look like the Gemini sculpture at first glance, in reality, this is none other than Isaac Dover himself. This is so stupidly ridiculous. This, this ice sculpture was the victim's body. But all I can see from this picture is an ice sculpture statue. That's because a certain piece of evidence was used to conceal it. The tarp! Yep. Conceal it! That's so dumb, though. How Who would think to do that? I know how to hide the body. I'll wrap him in a tarp and put him inside of an ice sculpture and nobody will know. <laughs> it's Ace Attorney. You played the circus case. <laughs> okay, but this is even more ridiculous. 
I would never say, oh my gosh, I'm going to hide a body in a sculpture. That's <laughs> like, that's bike. like, yeah, on a motorbike. That's like if you carved a statue and people were like, oh my gosh, the statue's so lifelike. And it was just a dead body. <laughs> but Michelangelo's David, it's actually a dead guy. <laughs> just right. wrapped in like rocks. Rocks wrapped in clay. <laughs> this is the cloth that was covered, that was covering the sculptures in the Autumn Palace. Why is the music so quiet? This cloth manipulates light. With it, it's entirely possible to make something look like ice. Wait, actually, hang on. No, it's just quiet. <laughs> this cloth manipulates light. With it, it's entirely possible to it's make like, something look like ice. You're getting a small victory. Do, do, do. <laughs> Isn't that right, Delicia? Yes, it. There we go. When it glows red, it's like raging inferno. And when it glows blue, you can almost feel the glittering cool ice. That cloth will only emit light when it's attached to a special device. Judge Courtney, look closely at the picture one more time. You pointed it out early, like earlier. Beneath the Gemini case lies a box-shaped object attached to the pedestal. This is... A rainbow light device. Detective Gumshoe reported one in the Winter Palace. This is the device that went missing 18 years ago. Originally, it would have been attached to the cloth inside the glass case. Naturally, Miss Hall took the device with her when she moved the sculptures. By using the rainbow light device to make a fluorescent cloth glow, Mr. Dover's body was made to look like an ice sculpture. That's... ridiculous. So yes, then, my thoughts exactly. When Uncle Ray took a photo of the Winter Palace, that's right. The body had been in front of us all along, disguised as Gemini. However, the body and the fluorescent cloth were both discovered in the fountain. If the ice sculpture was the body, we would have found it in the Winter Palace. If we had found it there, her trick would have been revealed immediately. Miss Hall moved the body out of the Winter Palace to prevent us from discovering it. Absurd. You say she threw the body into the fountain without any of us noticing? No, Judge Courtney. There was no need for that. She simply used the same method as before. Remember the lift trolley? Ah! Ah! She moved the body to some other room and dumped it into the stream in the fountain. Naturally, the frozen body would have sunk to the bottom of the fountain. That's why the cloth floated up first and was found by Delicia. And eventually, the body thawed out and floated to the surface. Monsieur Edgeworth, you truly have a gift for deductive reasoning. However, do you have any proof that I moved the body? I'm just waiting for her to, like, go crazy. <laughs> if you cannot prove that, then there is no way I can accept what you are saying. Hmm. Wasn't there anyone who saw Miss Hall move the body? Yes, I believe such a person exists. It was Loris Donum, right? The answers lie in the evidence that person gave me. And that piece of evidence will reveal the truth of Miss Hall's actions. Because seriously, babes with the... With the <laughs> Beauties, not babes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's... Yeah. <laughs> Pro Prosecutor Edgeworth, are you able to prove the crime of Miss Curator? Certainly. She has a name. She's more than just a job. <laughs> I have evidence that will show exactly what she did. They called Russellberry the Ringmaster all the time. But that's like, you would be known as the Ringmaster by so many people. This isn't like, <laughs> it's the museum curator. Like, the guardian of the park. The guardian of the park, yeah. <laughs> then it's time we see your answer. <laughs> Which piece of evidence reveals Miss Curator's actions? Wait till you see this sketch that Larry gave us. <laughs> she gets to see it. Another sketch. <laughs> I'm hot! <laughs> oh, it appears I've been drawn in this one. This is a sketch Larry drew of the women at the fountain patio. I would like to direct your attention to, to the you. service cart on the left side of the sketch. Service cart? What about it? Hmm. <laughs> Don't you see? What transpired 18 years ago has happened again. Miss Hall was moving the body in this sketch. No. Please wait. I don't see Monsieur Dover's body anywhere in that drawing. 
All I did was hand out chocolates to everyone. The key detail in this sketch is the color of the tablecloth. Up until now, I thought Larry had just made a mistake. The tablecloth? It's light blue. It may be light blue in the sketch, but no blue tablecloths exist in this mansion. Perhaps it's light blue because the body was hidden, still glowing, underneath the tablecloth. What? But... The lift trolley is rectangular in the sketch! If she just placed the body in the lift trolley, we would have noticed it immediately! There were two blocks of ice in the Winter Palace that are completely hollowed out. If she put the body inside the block of ice, it would look like a service cart. That's... Miss Hall, you put the body in the block of ice and used the lift trolley to move it, didn't you? I... Uh... I never imagined you would be able to do, do so much from just a single sketch. Larry's just that great. <laughs> but what if it was just a mistake like you said before? It doesn't prove anything. Hmm. I agree that alone the sketch is worthless. Once you remove the body, the service cart would revert back to a lift trolley. That's why the lift trolley was left behind in the fountain patio. And without the service cart, there would be no place for you to put your chocolates. Chocolates I gave everyone. Until then, the chocolates had sat on top of the service cart as you gave them away. But when you gave them to us, you took them from your pocket. Ah! Now that you mention it, they were a bit melted. But they were still really sweet and tasty! So why was it necessary to put them in your pocket halfway through? Th th that's because... That's because once the body was disposed of, you no longer had a service cart. Hold it right there. If she put the chocolates in her pocket and left the lift trolley in the patio, then where did the tablecloth go? If she had been forced to put the chocolates in her pocket, she wouldn't have had time to dispose of the tablecloth. Prosecutor Edgeworth, can you answer that for me? The tablecloth wasn't hidden. It's right in front of us. Do clarify. The tablecloth used to hide the body, where is it now? It's inside the patio, patio, or it's inside the fountain, it's outside of the patio. Miss Hall has it with her. The second one's stupid. <laughs> um. Which one do you think it is, though? They looked through that whole fountain, so it's probably the third one. Miss Hall has it with her. Yeah. Isn't it obvious? Miss Hall is carrying it with her out in the open. Out in the open? Ah, you mean... Miss Hall, you are wearing the tablecloth around your waist. The block of ice was not encased in a glass case. In other words, the tablecloth was in direct contact with the block of ice. If we have it examined, we will undoubtedly find traces of sherbet on it. Miss Hall, you will turn your tablecloth over to the police at once. There's no need to examine the tablecloth. It is just as you say. I stole the poison from Madame Delisha and I moved the body. I've done... I've done terrible things. Madame Delisha... I'm so sorry. One week ago, I took your Megatoxin X bottle. I slipped it into that man's pocket to make it look like suicide. And if they suspected it was murder, the evidence would point to Madame Delisha. Ah! Kate! Kate, what were you thinking? Weren't we always trying to save Mr. Master together? I could not let myself be arrested. Not until I had proven Monsieur Master's innocence. In the very beginning, I had planned to turn myself in once everything was over. But I suppose it's too late to say that now. Kate, why? Why would you go this far? Even for Monsieur Shields, I've caused nothing but trouble. For the past 18 years, I've been a criminal. The IS-7 incident... Don't tell me you were the true culprit. My 
greatest crime was stealing the Sherpet sculptures for my own selfish interest. When Molsiut over died, they were no longer just ordinary sculptures. They had become the final works of the sculpture men your master so deeply loved. What if, what if they melted before Monsieur Master returned? With that in mind, I couldn't let anyone touch them, not even the police. Even though I knew it was wrong, I moved them to the mansion's freezer. However, I only wanted to preserve Monsieur Dover's art. I did not know his body was hidden among them. So she stole the sculptures without noticing the body. Monsieur Master would never take another person's life. But because of me, the body vanished and Monsieur Master was found guilty. That kind man, he treated someone like me as family. He meant more to me than anyone else, and yet... Kate. When Monsieur Master was found guilty, I was chased out of the mansion. I was finally able to reclaim the mansion just a few days ago, but... When I saw the sculpture still sleeping away in the freezer, I realized... That I was the one who hit Monsieur Dover's body. Wait, so she just like walked into the freezer and was like... Are they still there? They're still there. There's a freaking dead body in there. Oh. Thank goodness the people who took over the mansion never looked in the freezer. Freezer. That, would, that would be the- Oh my gosh. I was, so, I clean hotels, basically. That's like something I do now. I can't Just imagine, for fun. It's not her job. No, no, no it's, it's partially my job. I can't imagine if I opened, like, one of the freezers in the hotel and just saw a dead body. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, that's not supposed to be there. Maybe you should call the police about that one. However, the statute of limitations had already expired. Therefore, I could think of no other way to atone for my sins. Well, we still don't know who, uh... Did it. It appears I've misunderstood her. I'd be okay with honestly not knowing. It seems she caused this entire incident in order to save Mr. Master. What you thinking about, Mr. Edgeworth? There's one thing that has been bothering me this whole time. Why would Miss Hall plan a murder with such an uncertain method like poison gas? And the reason she disguised the Autumn Palace to look like the Winter Palace. It's too complicated. Was to make those involved in the incident 18 years ago confuse the two rooms. I wonder what Kate was trying to accomplish. She was trying to prove Mr. Master's innocence. In that case, Miss Hall's true objective was... To turn herself in to find the true culprit. Yeah, to find the true culprit, duh. Perhaps she was trying to find the true culprit. Miss Hall, were you trying to prove Mr. Master's innocence? You wanted to reveal the true culprit and have the police find the body from 18 years ago. Was that not your true goal? By displaying those sculptures, you'd attract those involved in the past incident. Only two people would know where the body was hidden. You and the true culprit. The culprit would have panicked, knowing that the body would be displayed publicly. Yes, and if the culprit really showed up, there's the risk they'd erase their tracks. In the worst case scenario, they might have even stolen the body. So, how could she protect the evidence while simultaneously luring in the culprit? I see. That's why she made the Autumn Palace look like the Winter Palace. Yes. And then, Miss Hall, you must have fought. Whoever opens the Pisces case, believing it to be the Gemini case, must be the true culprit of the IS-7 incident. What? But, but that means... That person is the true culprit! Please wait a moment, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Do you realize what you're saying? Do you intend to accuse that person of being the culprit behind the IS-7 incident? Miss Hall was trying to trap the true culprit. If so, wouldn't the person who fell for the trap be the true culprit? However, I have no evidence to back up my claims. Also, like, we don't know anything about Gustavia. We really have- we talked to him once, basically. We talked to him once in both cases! 
No, just I mean, in the past. We haven't talked to him in the present oh, yeah, at all. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because he was just like, I wear red to, to cover up blood stains. I'm like, that might be a bit uh, bad. <laughs> no, you're like, it's too obvious. It's not. <laughs> if I make a formal accusation without any proof, it will not end well. Some of it is because I didn't... Um, Ace Attorney doesn't do the Scooby-Doo effect. Not the always. Scooby-Doo effect... Where you meet the one person... Is where you the meet the one person at the beginning, and then they leave... And then you're like, oh, it was the lady who It was who old looks, man Smivers. <laughs> it's the lady who looks like the alligator that's in the, in the lake. Like, it, they don't do that very often. Should I announce the true killer of Isaac Dover? Make an, an accusation? Don't make an accusation. Well, what is, why wouldn't we? All, everything is for naught otherwise. Throw <laughs> caution to the wind. What I should do is reveal the truth. In that case, there is no need to hesitate. Yes, that's correct, Judge Courtney. I indict this person as the true culprit behind the IS-7 incident. <laughs> Larry. Larry Butts! You did it! Is there any basis to suspect this person? He's there crazy. is not. <laughs> I should have picked her. <laughs> it's outrageous that you would suspect somebody without any basis. You could get sued for defamation. 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 There's nothing more embarrassing than to fail at this juncture. If it came to that, you want me to be your lawyer? No, no thanks. I have someone else in mind. <laughs> Before that, allow me to correct myself. It was you, Courtney! Is there any basis <laughs> to suspect this person? No. Dane Gustavia, who fell victim to the poison gas, is the true culprit of the IS-7 incident. G Gusties! Mr. Gustavia. Miss Hall, didn't you believe that if you opened this gallery, the true culprit would come? That's why you set up the poison gas trap, is it not? You truly have a gifted mind just like your father. It is as you say, Monsieur Edgeworth. Now, would you please tell us the whole truth? Yes. I have nothing more to hide. I will tell you everything. I set a trap in the gallery to find the true culprit. Before the gallery opened, I left only the Autumn Palace unlocked. At opening time, when I went around to unlock each room, I discovered that the Autumn, the Autumn Palace had been locked from the inside. I knew that the true culprit was on the other side of the door. My hand was trembling. All that was left was for the trap to do its work. When I heard Monsieur Gustavia was exposed to the poison gas, I realized he was the culprit. And I thought that if the police discovered Monsieur Dover's body, it would prove Monsieur Master's innocence. Why didn't you ever come talk to me? There might have been another way. I know that you did everything you could for me over the past 18 years. However, all of this has been brought upon my own crime. That is why I wanted to save Monsieur Master as soon as possible. Kate. Not only that, the police hid the fact that the body went missing 18 years ago. Even if I reported the body, there was a chance that the truth would be hidden again. That's why I caused the incident at the museum's opening, with as many witnesses as possible. I'm sorry. Gregory, Mr. Master, and even you. I couldn't protect anyone. Mr. Shields, it must be tough on him as well. The one who should be apologizing is me. Monsieur Edgeworth, Monsieur Shields, I'm terribly sorry. I shall accept whatever punishment I'm given. However, I must ask of you, please clear Monsieur Master's name. Yeah, that poor guy has been in prison 18 years. The truth that was hidden for 18 years was revealed in an unexpected manner. However, to think that things would end this way. I believe this next part is the last part. Duh. There's only one or two parts left. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. I'd say the last part of the case is the best part. I personally would say. I mean, it's cool playing as Gregory and everything. But this wraps everything else, everything up pretty awesomely. So look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.